Well, we were back from our adventure, and before I share the project car with you that we picked up, you know, sometimes in life you just have to do things that you don't really want to do, but it's going to facilitate the budget and hopefully help us go racing and continue to go fast. So, without further ado, there's our new car. What is up, Bomb Squad? Welcome to the Burn Down YouTube channel. We are out here doing the thing. We got the old girl unloaded. You and I are gonna play a little detective action uh, a little bit later this afternoon. It is hot as balls, and I got it unloaded, so I'm not laying on the ground. I've been doing that for all last week, so we ain't about trying to do that today when we're at home. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little ride out. We're gonna go look at a little something something. I'm gonna bring you guys along. And then hopefully we can do detective work, kind of go over the plan and see what we can do about uh, about this mess that we got going. Look at that thing. Poor girl. That's right. Well, it took a little while. Uh, we are on the way home. I didn't want to film. There's a handful of guys over there. Super cool. So thank you guys all for helping me out. I didn't want to put you on blast on the camera. And it was actually a pretty nice neighborhood. And it was trash day and I was blocking because I had my trailer and the, the homes were really close together where I was in that neighborhood. So I was really just trying to get out of there, not be a nuisance, you know, not have the guy's neighbors complaining and people caring, yelling at me. So everybody was friendly. Luckily, there was like no traffic on the street. It was a really cool little neighborhood. And um, I'm sure that his neighbors are super excited to get that eyesore out of his driveway and uh, that it's going to go be an eyesore at my house for a little while. So. We will get home, we'll get out of the truck, and we will kind of do a once-over on the old Project Aru that's going to help put the Malibu back on track. So if you're watching this before we get over there, why don't you take a wild guess in the comment section what you think it is, and I will give you a hint. Um, and this is the way the universe seems to work for me. If I say I'm going to do stuff, the universe always kind of beats me up. So this particular car, I actually don't care for them, um, to be completely honest with you, and I think it is the vanilla of the drag race world so if that's not a good hint and you don't know what it is i don't know but yeah leave it in the comment section and post up the bombs and booms i appreciate you guys we'll bring you back at home and we'll take a gander well we were back from our adventure and before i share the project car with you that we picked up you know sometimes in life you just have to do things that you don't really want to do but it's going to facilitate the budget and hopefully help us go racing and continue to go fast. So, without further ado, there's our new car. Bam! Ha! Gay! All right, I know, I know. Before you guys get too excited, I personally am really not that happy about having to put Mustang pattern wheels on the freaking Malibu. Are you kidding me? I've been a five on four and three quarter for as long as I can remember. I even swapped out the old lug pattern on there because ain't nobody want no Ford stuff on their Chevy. Well, just like in Fast and Furious. This is your car. Hey, pop the hood. Pop the hood? Pop the hood. Bada boom, bada bing. Check those dogs out. Eh? Eh? So I went on Facebook Marketplace. Ever since I came home, it's about a two day drive from California to Oklahoma. I was trying to figure out what kind of suspension we would like to put on the Malibu. I ran it by Mr. Matt Frost. And I was like, I don't want to be limited. What can I do? I'd like to clip the car and strut it. But if that's not going to be legal for hot rod, I don't want to do that. Well, it turns out it is. And the easiest and simplest solution I could come up with was Fox body suspension because these things are the vanilla of the car world, race car world. Everybody's got one. Uh, seems like they change them like underwear. Everybody wants to put one together. They buy all the parts and it's just readily available everywhere. So from a drag and drive standpoint and a strut front end portion, um, wheel bearings, all that stuff, I wanted to get something that I could get a hold of. Uh, Strange makes like some really cool struts that are their brand and then they have their hubs and all this stuff. Well, 
I can't go into AutoZone and talk to the kid behind the counter and go, I need wheel bearings for a strange strut. It's just not gonna happen. And then you gotta start carrying more stuff. It's all specific. So I wanted to keep road core stuff on the Malibu. And I also wanted to take the opportunity to make it a bit faster, light it up. Uh, it's more room for activities. We gotta change a bunch of stuff. We're gonna start digging into this in a minute here too, after my lecture. But this thing has the K member, the struts, all the stuff. Went on Facebook Marketplace. The gentleman was kind enough to haggle with me a little bit. I got the entire car for $1,200. So if I had to buy all that suspension stuff new, it would cost me a lot more than that. And fun fact, nothing is tight on it. This is a project. They put all the stuff in loosely because they were mocking you up or doing whatever. They never even ran it. That rack is all new. Everything's new. It's got a little bit of a little rust on it, but a little, you know, we'll knock it off, knock the dust off. I think 150 miles an hour will do it good. It'll be fine, right? So super excited about that. And um, I have two different people. I got Bobby from Portable Car Hoist. He's actually local to me. He has a frame rack uh, that he said I could use. And then I have another gentleman that actually has dudes that know how to run the deal. So we might go over there and make a video because it's for a community college. So we might um, showcase them and showcase the stuff they do and kind of give them a video, give them some uh, a shout out and help them out. And then if they can help me straighten the boom out. And then I've already also, I know it's a lot. We've got uh, my buddy Jason Russell does off-road fab, builds rad stuff, trophy trucks, off-road stuff. I'm not an off-road guy, but um, you know I can appreciate talent and the things he does is awesome. It's not my cup of tea and drag racing isn't his, but it's all the same. It's tubing and you bend it and you square it up and you plumb bob it and do the deal. And I'm gonna let him, whoo, look at that fly. I'm gonna let him have at it. So I'm gonna lean on him for his expertise to put enough tubing on this that that K member and everything, the plan is to get the K member for the Mustang to bolt into my car, I think would be the best bet. It might be a little more difficult to do it that way, but then if I had uh, something happen or whatever in the future, I mean, I hope not, man, let's knock on something. But um, I could just get bolt on Fox body junk and just throw it on the car. I think that's the way to go. It might, the tubing portion of it might be a little more trick doing it that way, but then I don't have tubing on there where the stuff bolts on. Um, so it's not a one-off. So we'll see, I'll just talk to Jason. He's gonna come out and then now I have a car, he can pull measurements off of this so he knows where everything should be kind of lined up. We'll, we'll do all that. And then it just needs to do that over here because uh, this thing, uh, she's a little close and it's a little bent up. So yeah, I wanna mess with you guys a bit, but hell no, not in a million years. Uh, we're not rolling 5.0s with our rag top down for, so our hair can blow, like I don't, I'd rather go slow. I'll be straight up honest with you. Um, I wish they would just do Fox Body races where all the Fox Bodies could go race Fox Bodies and then we could all watch regular drag racing and those guys could just go off in the corner and, and Fox Body each other up until they're, you know, blue in the face. So I don't, it's a rad car factory race car. Um, they will probably beat my car forever in a day. I know that they're fast. I know they're wonderful. But there's something to be said for some uh, old Detroit steel that goes fast and looks good doing it and that's just me personal preference you know i feel a lot cooler driving this even if it is slower than that thing like that car with my drivetrain would be a monster but then yeah i don't care so again um look at that new pads lme and then these guys haven't even run but these are four lugs so we're gonna have to convert it but i believe this stuff's fine and then we'll just change the hub portion out i think so um and then we might even go with the better brake, I don't know, but I want a street brake too. So that way, again, if I have a brake pad or a brake issue, you go to AutoZone O'Reilly, you tell the guy it's a four wheel drive, it's got windshield wipers on it, and I need some disc brake pads, and they're like, we got you covered. So um, let's drag this, put it away, put it in the backyard. That's enough trolling mess with you guys. I know your heart is probably uh, a little hurt, and you hopefully you're already in the comment section blowing me up, but with booms instead of with insults, <laughs> we'll put it away. Back where it's out of everybody's sight, I know it's an eyesore. And then um, let's take this hood off and we'll poke around. And I already found something I wanna share with you guys. I found the culprit of why we actually kinda of ate it, but I wanna investigate further to see if it could have been due to pressurizing the coolant system. But give me a minute, let's get rid of this turd and then we will spend some time with uh, the, the beauty over here that's a little beat up, needs some loving. All right, we got Ugly Betty put behind the house. And I want to share this with you because I'm fresh off of Adam Dory's podcast, That's Cool Drink. If you missed it, please go check it out. Subscribe to him. And he's a great dude. He's the announcer for Rocky Mountain Race Week. And then he also works with 
sick the mag and does sick events and all that fun stuff. So this was my setup that I was sitting at, which is pretty fun. I had to put this behind me because I have bolts that stick out here and it was killing my back right before we got started. I had technical difficulties because I had my old laptop here that didn't work. So I put my phone stand up and plugged a bunch of junk in and then my phone overheated. And luckily I had trusty topos on ice. So we took these, this and I threw my phone in here and it made a comeback. And then I was just grabbing chunks of ice and holding it on the back of the phone because your boy likes to talk. So that's a fun, fun fact. That was a studio setup I had. And then my good laptop, my editing laptop, obviously showed up that's why this video is out but it showed up today um and i left it in the hotel room so man it was what a cluster but anyway we got a cold topo let's crack this let's pull that hood and i want to share some stuff with you guys and kind of investigate further but we'll pull the hood i'll share what i found on the car and then we'll look into it a little bit further we'll brainstorm together here live and then you guys leave comments because uh a lot of you are smart a lot smarter than me and you might have some insight for me Okay, so this is the first time the hood has been off. And I was curious about this. Hmm. So there's a little bit. Looks like there was. Yeah, so maybe we did pressurize the coolant system a bit. And this is a. It's only a 15 pound cap. So. Looks like there's a little here, maybe. But I would imagine if this cap let go, like if it was leaking, possibly could have been a bit. I feel like if it would have let go, it would have just kind of geysered. But I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. If this thing became too pressurized, what it would look like. I don't think it would look like little dribbles like that it looks like maybe something but that possibly didn't really splash i mean if you look at everything else we're kind of looking for signs of uh, liquid all right we'll pull a dipstick we're gonna pull plugs in a little bit um, you know a little splish splash on that so hmm Hmm, you guys wanna see something fun? Let me show you when I was laying underneath it. Actually, let's take that, uh, I guess we take the bent up belly pan off first. Let's do that because this has to come off anyway. So let's pull this, this thing's bent up and then I'll get out of the way and I can see a better picture of kind of underneath, see what else we watered up. So let's get tools and oh, maybe I can just unzeus it. Let's try that. The belly pan is connected to the chassis. So the chassis moved back and it stuffed it. So this is probably what turned the motor off. So see if I can pry this free from that dude. And this thing is, I don't know if it's stuck because of that or what, but let me work on it a little bit. Get these things out of here. We got that off and this is what I looked at earlier with even with that pan on I was like man where did the fluid come from like maybe I thought the overflow was puking right so maybe it puked and it hit that dude back there which he's no longer there it was this this twin slick to this guy and then we got a little some some on there like it's a little bit of you know it's ugly but it's not I think I wiped that up but it doesn't look like there's enough fluid to justify it and then if you look back on the way back there I mean you probably can't see but it's dirty but it's not like I don't see like new fluid right well if we moved over and I was trying to look looking at this and oil and everything and you move up you move up to back there 
Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's, that's odd. Hey, hey guy. Seems like something's loose kind of going on back there. What is, what could that possibly be? Man, is that supposed to be there? I mean, is that, is that part of the water pump supposed to remove itself? I mean, I didn't know they were removable, so it must be a speed part. Um, this is, this is our, this is our boy right here. So, when you don't have the back of the water pump in there, it will evacuate the water. And I have the pan, just like an NHRA, NHRA states. And the pan goes frame rail to frame rail, so it pumped it down, filled that pan up, this dude here, and then obviously the, the thing technically is watertight, right? But then when you get to the Zeus fasteners, and there's only so much it can do. So it overflowed, spilly spill, then goes for a ride, hits the wall at about 20. Um, this is metal, right? This is not aluminum. Metal and aluminum expand at different rates. I know this is a press fit. I don't know how press fit it is, but with the torture testing we were doing on the car, and the heat and all that other stuff and you go on the interwebs and look up the plug falling out of water pumps and they pop up this does happen i asked multiple people uh, and they said yeah that happens i've seen that happen so we were lucky and it happened to us so did i pressurize the coolant system that's why i was looking up here earlier and like i said there's a little bit of dribble drabble but those look like dots I mean, it could have been misting, it could have been whatever, but this doesn't look like it evacuated. Like this cap let go and just went everywhere, right? That on the other hand, she gone. That opened up, this thing's spinning 7,000 RPM and you guys can imagine you know, what happens after that. But I was looking for heads. I kind of smelled coolant. So, yeah. So hopefully the good news is, hopefully the motor's still good. So let's pull the plugs out. Uh, now that I got that thing free, maybe we can kind of just turn it over by hand. We'll pull plugs and kind of see. We'll indicate and kind of look at them. Uh, we are going to pull the motor, pull the motor apart. I'm going to have my buddy Wade help me with that and go through it over at War Performance because I have a lot going on. Could I go through the motor myself? Yeah. We can garden hose it off and press it up, throw it back together like we did before. But I would rather have somebody else do that because I have so many irons in the fire with this thing. And I'm the only guy that can fix all the body um stuff and and I, i'm not the only guy but i'm the only guy within my budget <laughs> that could do it because i can't this isn't going to chassis shop jail or any of that so we'll lean on our friends and then i'm gonna inspect the turbo and all that other stuff but let's do this quick one before we let you guys get get out of here we'll pull all these pull them all out kind of inspect the plug see if anything looks funky or goofy uh maybe just spin it over by hand and watch and see if it pukes anything out and then if it doesn't I guess we're looking pretty good for the motor's sake. Nothing. All right. Cylinder number dose looks okay. Survey says nada. I haven't changed plugs in this car in forever, but Nothing out of order. I don't think smelling them does anything, but it just makes me feel more scientific. So, <laughs> smell, smell like motor to me. Survey says. Fine. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Oh my. Oil pressure sensor got broken. Man, how did that happen? I don't know, maybe it didn't break, it just knocked the guts out of it. That's kind of funny. <clears throat> yeah, we should probably tear this thing down just from the, the hit that it took, just to make sure everybody's happy, happy. I don't see anything. Do you see anything? Looks like a dirty old plug to me.
Alright. On to the other side. This one's white on top a little bit. So that's different. So maybe, maybe just maybe that's something. And that was cylinder number five. And this is cylinder seven. Also, I did have a leaky cylinder. I'm on the, I think it was the intake. And that might be our, I think that might have been our leaky intake cylinder. But. We'll have to look up. I think if you flushed a bunch of coolant through it, it would be one of those like, hey, that doesn't look normal. But I don't know. We're not a motor guy. I'll lean on you guys. So that one. And a little bit of... This is garbage, but... I don't know, man. I don't think... Looks like a normal... Normal 87. And then run some E85 through it and spin her up. Plug to me. So let's do this. Let's... I don't know. Nothing... Nothing jumped out crazy at me. Let's pull the dipstick. More investigating investigating here's a pro tip too harbor freight gotta love it they got this thing dude this big old what is it the shop towel blue monster bucket and then it slides out of here so you can take it to go so that thing is rad and they got refills like 15 bucks and the towels last forever you look at all the stringy junk from like the red towels or whatever so let's do this I don't know if that angle works for y'all. Let's try that. So we're looking for the milkshake. We are clean. Clean, clean. No milkshake bringing the boys to the yard over here, but we could have separated, right? We've been sitting for a while, a few days. So I think the next thing would be to let me put a ratchet on it. We'll spin it by hand just to see. See if anything, any one of these guys puke. So we can try that. So let me grab a bigger ratchet. We can spin it over a little bit now that the plugs are out. And then, I don't think I have enough room to, because this thing holds a lot of oil at this point. I don't have enough empty space. So maybe what we can do is we'll turn it over and then I'll get a like the bucket of oil stuff underneath it and we'll let it out and then before it fills up we'll just plug it because i i would think we're gonna see some milkshake action in there if we were pushing water in to the oil possibly so let's do let's turn the motor over and then we'll try that lefty loosey right tidy again we're not gonna empty all of it this already has fluid in it but let's see We just changed the oil too, so it shouldn't be terrible. But, as long as it's not white and milky, that would be nice. Just make sure we don't fill it up. Yes, yeah, it's nice fresh oil. Is it just me or do you guys make a mess changing oil too? I can't ever, like with all this real estate, it wants to drip back off the off the deal. Well boys, I mean, we weren't pushing it. We were on 10 pounds. I mean, you can push head gaskets, I guess, but I feel like we were pretty conservative and the tune was pretty good. So I don't, I don't see milkshake there boys. I see fresh motor oil. It was changed. So. Yeah, man, I don't know. 
Uh, we're gonna plug her back up before we overflow. So, let's tighten that off. Well, in my honest opinion, I think the motor's fine. Um, I don't think anything's wrong with it. I think the old water pump trick did us in. We're gonna have to go through stuff though, because you can see, we got pushed around and stuff. You know, the, the mid plate got hit. Uh, this guy's not happy. That's definitely not, not this guy, that guy. So we're gonna, we have our stuff we, cut out for us. I wanna make sure that everything is decent so we're gonna pull the motor apart and all that. We'll look at the turbo, we'll inspect all this stuff together, but so far, I mean, I don't see no milkshake. Till, till next time you guys have to do, I'm out.